Hey, we're back. This time we're going to be looking at Psychological Warfare from DBH Games. This one was given to me by the designer to do an honest review of. Just wanted to put that out there. But This one's a, another card game based on you're playing as an archetype and you're using different kinds of phobias and psychosis and things like that as well as defense mechanisms to try to achieve whatever it is of your objective based on the archetype you choose. In the meantime, you're using um, the defense mechanisms and things to defend yourself while the whole time gaining emotional baggage, which you end up having to go to therapy to deal with. It's a really interesting and fun concept, and uh, we'll get right in and take a look. So the first thing you have is our rules fly out. Again, printed on some nice thick paper. It does a good job of explaining the basics, the turn structure. Gotta love diagrams. And they have a, uh, even have an FAQ tagged on the end here that answered a couple questions. I did come into a couple questions while reading through the rules. And again, it's that comes down to that. Once you've played it once or twice, you'll really pick it up. Usually it's because they mention a term early on in the rules that isn't explained till later. So if you read through the entire thing, it does make more sense. But at first it can be a little bit confusing. Not too bad though. So inside we have our tokens. These are going to be used to keep track of the points in your various stats. They're clear plastic. Kind of wish they were just a hair smaller as they uh, don't exactly fit on the boards, which you'll see in a minute. But they do the job. Each player is going to get one of these needs category scorecards. This is where you're going to keep track of uh, pretty much your score throughout the game. As you do things or your opponents do things, your scores are going to move up and down in the different categories. You have freedom, fun, belonging, and power. If things drop to the um, lowest rating here, you start getting um, you get the various negative effects down here and they have different effects throughout the game as far as your when you're down there. Now if I can do this while I'm holding it, because i got to hold it at an angle not to get glare, but to keep track you're going to use these little discs, which are not going to want to sit on there because I'm holding it. They start on three and they move throughout the course of the game. As I was saying, I wish these were just a hair smaller so that they fit on there a little bit better. They do the trick though, and then these are going to slide up and down as various things happen throughout the game. The goal is to have the highest score in certain ones of these. Depending on your archetype, you're going to get bonus points for that. Ideally, you want to have the highest in all of them, but that's usually not going to happen. Next, we have our archetype cards. These are all the various characters that you're going to play as. And each one of them has different personality traits. Down here on the bottom they have different victory points conditions which line up with the categories on your scorecard. So you can see which one you're going to get the most bonuses for. In this case you're going to get the most bonus on fun for the jester which makes sense. Up here it gives you a quick synopsis of your character and what their motivations are pretty much. Everyone has a special ability here. Which won't make a lot of sense until you've actually played the game and you understand what the wording is. But there's a lot to choose from especially when it's only a four player game. There's all these and there's an extra one that came in cats. If you bought cats from the same company there's a um, promo character in there as well. Next we have an effects of neurosis card. These are the uh, effects that you get for dropping any of your stats down to one. These line up and they're color coded as well with the stats. It says what the problem is and what the penalties are as long as your stat stays at a one. On the back side we have the order of play. And you get two of those. One for each side of the table basically. And the main part of the game focuses on the Psychological Warfare deck here. And these are all shuffled up actually because we've been playing. But they, they're broken down into a couple different categories. Also color coded with the uh, categories. But these are the different cards you're going to use to 
either boost your stats or lower your opponent's stats throughout the course of the game. They have a cost up here which you have to cover in order to play them, which is built up by putting uh, cards from your hand face down on the table into your mental energy pool. You can spend mental energy to play these cards, whatever numbers up here. When you play them, you get the bonus here. You can raise one of your stats by plus three and an opponent's stats by minus one. And then they have some fluff text down here, which is kind of fun. And then the emotional baggage down here at the bottom. As you play these, you're going to build up emotional baggage. This limits the number of cards that you can have in your hand. And pretty much instead of doing your normal turn, you can spend a turn in therapy to get rid of these and remove the emotional baggage so you can get more cards in your hand. All the cards are also labeled by their type on the side here. You have your action cards, special cards, reactions, defense mechanisms stay in play and help you with uh, various things that come up. And you have hidden agenda cards, which you can use to get bonus victory points at the end of the game. And then there are phobia cards, which also stay in play and... Uh, do various things to mess up your normal turn plays. And a whole huge deck of these cards too. And gameplay goes until you've gone through the deck of cards. Game also includes an extra Ziploc bag that came in there. I'm not sure what it's for. Maybe to keep the character cards in. I think it's slightly too small for cards. So, not sure what that one was for. The um, tokens come in their own little bag so the other one's kind of just extra and that's pretty much it for psychological warfare that's everything that's in here the basics on how to play I didn't go over the whole turn structure and things I may do a how to play a video on some of these games if people are interested but you get the basic idea here I have not played this one as much as I have played some of the other games it is new I played a handful of games over the weekend and uh, Enjoyed it for the most part. There does seem to be some imbalance in some of the powers of the characters, but it might just be that we're new at this and haven't learned the strategies yet. But um, it, it was an interesting game. A lot of the fun comes from reading the various uh, fluff text on the cards, especially as you play them. And uh, you have the title of the card up here, and then the fluff text down here, which does... Uh, Various things depending on the card and that kind of is very entertaining to to call out back and forth as you play the cards on your opponents Especially if you're in a friendly group There was a lot of laughing and things going on the game itself though is it's pretty straightforward It did take a couple plays here before you can grasp the basics Overall, it was a good fun game Plays pretty quickly maybe half hour or so for a game. It's not bad it's two to four players, which is kind of fun. I like games that are two player. At the same time, you have all of these characters. It would have been cool to have a couple extra um, scoreboards and the ability to add up to maybe six players or so. The only downside to that is the game timer is the deck of cards that you draw through as you go. More players mean shorter game. So that's something to keep in mind. But still would have been nice to have a, a more player option on there when there's so many characters to choose from. Overall, though, it's a pretty fun game, and uh, it doesn't take itself too seriously, which is adds to the, the whole theme of the thing. In fact, even on the back of the box here, there's a big thing that says, Don't buy this game. It talks about being reverse psychology, which is kind of funny. But there's little things like that all over. If I had to make one little complaint about the game, is that the uh, box doesn't come with any kind of insert. And that's actually what I've been using that extra bag for is to separate out the cards because uh, without any insert things tend to get a little messy in there so I've been doing it like so not sure if that was the intention but uh, would have been nice to have something in there I'm not sure what they could have done just because of the way the components sit in there but it just would have been nice to have something to separate out things it works okay the way it is though everything fits neatly in there Overall, as I said, the game's fun to play with the right group of people. It's nice to um, play the different uh, action cards and phobias on each other, read the little fluff text and kind of make fun of each other as you go. That adds a lot to it. It plays quick. 
it's somewhat easy to pick up. It's a little rough your first playthrough, but definitely once you've either seen it played or played around yourself, it becomes much easier. And then you can, then you can really get into it a lot more. I did enjoy it after my, my second or third playthrough. I really did get into it a lot more, and it was a lot better after that. So keep that in mind if you do play. Overall, though, I did enjoy it. It was fun, and I will definitely be playing it again. That's going to about wrap it up for Psychological Warfare. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.